Platinum nanostructures with dendritic or branch-like features could lead to better energy, environmental, and security-related technologies. What we do is try to structure metals to make different shaped uh, nanostructures um, that um, have different functional properties than, uh, than larger scale metal uh, materials. Oh, this one, this one's yeah. not, we can see. But you can see, see really see the dendritic structure in the wheels there. Awesome, that's, that's beautiful, awesome. isn't it? How thick is this one? Scientists at Sandia National Laboratories have discovered the dendritic growth of platinum and see many applications for the technology, including improvements for hydrogen fuel cells. Platinum is often used in fuel cells, but it's rare and expensive. It's an efficient catalyst for boosting chemical reactions in fuel cells for electric vehicles, but its structure changes during use, causing its effectiveness to drop. The goal with new methods of growing and structuring the metal is to use it more efficiently and make it more stable and durable. The technology has been licensed to Compass Metals Incorporated, and their first available product is Nano Coral, an electrocatalyst for fuel cells. These are hydrogen fuel cells, so the pol only pollution you get out of them is, is water. Um, and so it's a very clean uh, way to power cars. And if, and if this, these issues associated with using platinum and getting durability in the fuel cell, uh, so lowering the plat platinum usage and, and increasing durability, if those problems can be solved, it's a very uh, clean and efficient uh, way to run automobiles. Sandia's team has discovered new ways to control the growth of platinum that enhance the activity of the metal surface where catalysis takes place. Their approach is to replace typically used platinum nanoparticles with nano sheets that have this special property and are only about eight atoms thick. They're very thin that helps get the high surface area you need and then they have this dendritic structure where the arms are around three nanometers wide uh, spacing of about one nanometer between them and so they have a very small feature size uh, which means that they have very high surface areas and then they have this added feature that uh, when they begin to change during operation in the fuel cell or by heating and other other processes, they do what's called ripening. Small structures begin to get larger uh, feature size, but in this case, they form what's called a holy sheet. So the spacing between the arms of the dendrites um, start to close up in places and leave holes in the sheet. And that feature then preserves the surface area which you need to carry out catalysis and makes the, the electric catalyst used in the fuel cell more durable and perhaps can give you advantages um, in longer life lasting fuel cell uh, function. The team relies on electron microscope images and simulations to verify their experimental findings and help them understand the growth processes. Frank has been doing the, the uh, Monte Carlo uh, simulations of the centering process or ripening process of these dendritic sheets into the holy sheets, uh, which have this durability uh, property that we're after. He's giving us the, the basic understanding through the simulations of how that process works. Sheets, as we see here, very thin, thin, thin structures are very unlikely. And that all has to do with the, with the unique processes that John and Yu Jung are using to grow these. The benefits of metal nanomaterials are just beginning to be realized, with new opportunities appearing in the areas of solar cells, sensors, electronics, and catalysis. Looking forward to applying their technology to a wide range of metals and templating structures beyond those currently licensed, Sandia's team continues their innovative work at the nanoscale.